So in this example, this one's actually already rewritten as a single product. But do you guys see, we can't simplify this at all, right? There's nothing, unfortunately, to simplify. So one thing we can do, though, is um, since we can't simplify this, I'm going to rewrite this as the cube root of x squared over the cube root of 3y. Okay. Um, now we have an issue. Um, we just we can't really simplify that, or we really can't divide the denominator into the numerator. So when we can't divide the denominator into the numerator, we're going to simplify basically the expression. All right. And a lot of times we call this rationalizing the denominator. And we did rationalizing the denominator with complex numbers, if you guys remember. Remember when we had i in the bottom? We didn't want to have i in the bottom, right? Well, it's kind of the same thing. If you can't divide a radical into the other one, like that last example, then basically we just want to get rid of the radical in the denominator then. Okay? So again, you always follow the same process. Simplify each radical. Can either of these be simplified? No. So now we're going to apply the operation. Well, I can't really divide, so therefore I'm going to have to simplify. And the idea, again, goes back to this identity element. If I can find, if I can get my radicand to be raised to the same power as my index, then I can apply the identity element. right? I can say it's equal just to that radicand. So we look at our index, and we say, all right, I need to get this raised to the third power. Correct? Right? I need to multiply this so it's raised to the third power. Now, you cannot multiply. If I did 3 times the square root of 3, that's it. Done. It does not equal the square root of 9. You can't multiply a number outside of a radical inside of a radical. Doesn't work. Okay? However, if I had square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that equals the square root of 9. So if you have two numbers, right? under a radical, you can multiply them. So I need, to mul I need to get 3y to be 3y cubed, right? Yes? Does everybody agree with me? So if I write this as like 3y to the first power, what would I need to multiply by? Yes? If you multiply it like, you know you would have to multiply it by uh, uh, y to the second, and then uh, probably, uh, probably just think of it as powers. Forget about numbers. Think of it as raised to a, as exponents. Oh, both the mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would need to multiply 3y times 3y squared. Right? Forget about simplifying the numbers. Yes, we know that's 9 and that's y squared. But do you guys agree with me? This times this gives you 3. 3y times 3y squared equals 3y cubed. Does, do you guys agree with me on that? Yes? OK. However, remember I said you can't multiply something outside of a radical inside of a radical. So therefore, I need to write it like this. Actually, let's use red. Then, if you guys remember, when rationalizing the denominator with complex numbers, whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator. OK. So now we have, number, we have radicals we're multiplying. Remember the rules of radicals. If you have two radicals with the same index, you can just multiply them on the inside, right? So what I end up having is the cube root of my numerator is now going to be 3 squared is 9, y squared is y squared, and then x squared. Does everybody see that's my numerator? Does everybody agree with me? Yes? I just multiplied. All right, I simplified this. 3y squared is 3y times 3y, which is 9y squared, right? I multiplied 9y squared times x squared. Well, that's just 9y squared times x squared. Can't simplify that. You just multiply them. Correct? Now let's do the denominator. I have the cube root, uh, cube root of 3y times the cube root of 3y squared. So I just multiply 3y times 3y squared. What's 3y times 3y squared? 3y cubed. So it's the cube root of 3y cubed. The reason why I didn't say don't think about numbers like 9 or 6 or whatever it was, because what can I apply here? I can apply the what? 
identity element, right? Three y, the cube root of 3y cubed is just going to be 3y. So just to save a little time, I'm just going to erase it rather than writing another step. Now I go back again to my last step, simplify. Can I simplify this any further? Oh, yeah, the cube goes that way. We don't really need the parentheses. So can I simplify the numerator anymore? Can I take the cube root of any of those numbers? No, nope. and 3y is fine on the denominator. OK? Yes? Um, so when you multiply 3y to the first times 2y to the second, why did you multiply the um, inside the first? You could, but I mean, I'm just, it's like this. x to the first times x squared equals x cubed. The reason why I left it out there is because I knew I was going to use the identity element. There's nothing wrong with multiplying this to give you um, 27y cubed. But what I'm telling you is, what did you have on the bottom? Was the cube root of 27y cubed? It's much easier to simplify the cube root of 3y cubed than do the cube root of 27y cubed. So yes, you could multiply that out. Not, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm just saying. I know that you're going to simplify it anyways, so just leave it as the powers because it's much easier to simplify it than rather than now, if you multiply it out, what do you have to do now? Now you have to take the cube root of 27 and the cube root of y, which is going to give you the same answer. It's still going to give you 3y. It's just a di I just didn't go through the work because I, know, I knew I was going to simplify it anyways. Does that kind of make sense? OK. Um, Josh, I'm going to have you go back to your seat. <laughs>